The third supplementary question. Madam Speaker. Yes, Honourable. Madam Speaker, I rise on uh, Rule 140. And can I get assurance from you that the President is alone in that room? Because it certainly looks to me like he is being coached by somebody in that room, which I think would be a violation of the rules of Parliament. I think it's only fair if he's not going to come to Parliament that he faces the same interrogation that he would face if he was here in person. And if there are other people in that room that are assisting him with the answers, I would submit it's a violation of the rules. I can tell you with great certainty, I don't need any assistance to answer your question, nor any question indeed. And the suggestion that I am coached is actually quite demeaning. And it just shows and demonstrates the extent to which the leader of the opposition has lost it in trying to gain brownie points publicly, he casts aspersions. I don't need coaching. I know my work and I do my work diligently on, the pe on behalf of the people of our country. Mr. President, you say I've lost it, uh, but given the fact that you can't pay your staff salaries and you can't submit candidates for an election, I would venture to say that you, sir, are the one that has lost it. Mr. President, we could speak all day about any one of the compromised candidates that you shuffled around recently, but I want to ask you particularly about a member of your cabinet, Mr. Didi Mabuza, your deputy president and the leader of government business in this house, who certainly doesn't meet any of the criteria which you've set out for us so eloquently in the house today. In fact, you put him in charge of leading the coronavirus response, and yet he's been completely AWOL during the whole term of the pandemic. We also know that he's been completely missing in action during the crisis. He's also recently been out of the country for six full weeks, apparently for a routine medical checkup in Russia. What a vote of confidence in the South African healthcare system and your plans for NHI in South Africa. Mr. President, I don't know how you keep justifying keeping him in your cabinet, but the question I want to ask you today is can you give this House and South Africans a categoric assurance that not one cent of public money was spent on his travel, his accommodation, his security, and any other expense relating to that trip to Russia. Thank you. Mr. President. Honorable Speaker, thank you. I take it that uh, the Honorable Stephen Hazen is entitled to get into tirades and uh, make uh, statements about various members of uh, the National Assembly. But in relation to the Deputy President, Mrs. Tian Hazen, some measure of kindness is required when somebody is not well. Deputy President was not well, quite some time, and this I know because I got involved in granting him leave so that his health can be restored. He had to take time off because he was not well. When somebody is not well, to be subjected to the types of attacks that Mr. Stian, Honorable Stian Hazen is subjecting the Deputy President to. I find that not only unkind, but I find that quite terrible, really, because we are talking about somebody who was not well. When he gets his treatment, in the end, Honorable Stian Hazen is a personal choice. Just as anyone would choose which doctor should treat them, which dentist should treat them, they are entitled because it affects them personally and they need to feel that they can get whatever treatment best 
from whatever medical practitioner. Mr. President, the only light for many municipalities is the fact that they have dodged the ANC because your party failed to submit candidates in 94 municipalities. How lucky they are. What a complete blessing for them. And this must say, Mr. President, I want to congratulate you on this because this is the best back to basics plan for local government that you could ever have come up with. I've just spent the last week in uh, the Northwest province visiting towns and I've seen for myself the terrible effects of cater deployment on municipalities. Local government in the Northwest has collapsed completely. The Northwest is ground zero for CADA deployment. Clover's employees are the latest victims of CADA deployment as the uh, businesses had to leave the town because they couldn't operate without basic services anymore. Mr. President, you've heard three years of testimony of how devastatingly damaging the policy, your policy, of CADA deployment has been in local government and in other spheres of government. Our question to you and your team there at the union buildings is therefore this. Why did you beg Judge Zondo to keep this terrible policy in place, knowing the damage it has done in South Africa? The Honourable the President. Honourable Speaker, thank you. I see that uh, Honourable Stian Hazen has completely monopolized asking questions from the DA just to himself, meaning that uh, most of the members in the DA are either being bludgeoned to submission that they should never ask any question and that the Supreme Leader should be the only one who asks questions. That casts a very sad image of a, a party of opposition quite sad. I would have uh, uh, really truly appreciated and enjoyed uh, getting questions from a number of other DA leaders, because that is how we sharpen leadership from all sorts of people in our parliamentary benches, rather than just to have one person monopolizing. How sad, how really truly sad. But having said that, Order. Uh, I point of order, start. Mr. President, point of order has been raised. Madam Speaker, yes. I would have thought that the President would have been aware of parliamentary tradition from parliaments the world over. That's that when it's Prime Minister's questions, order. it's the leader of the opposition Please, that answers. That is not a point of order. Take your seat, Honourable Member. Madam <laughs> <laughs> Speaker, uh, problem is that we are not any other country. We are South Africa and we have our own unique way of doing things and we don't tend to mimic uh, what is done elsewhere. It is this problem of mimicking, of wanting to mimic what is done elsewhere, including the shriek voice through which Honorable Stian Hazen raises his question.